I don't really know that much about idea and tree. I think they call it a storyteller tree. So I think people used to sit down here and just like gather and tell stories. But you know it's a K-pop tree by its big roots. Look at them. Look at that. that lives on other plants so that's actually pretty cool there's another one right here oh like orchids and things yeah and lichen this is lichen on here well, let's go around the corner and see if we can find some more uh, trees to mark off on our scavenger hunt guys if you are still doing the scavenger hunt that's the last tree on the hunt and you can find it over by the fort Let's go over here and maybe take a look at some trees and what else we can find. Are you part of the bio blitz too? I Are you guys? Oh, that's right. So I, I forgot. We met this morning. I completely yeah. forgot. But we have our reptile and amphibian expert here. Because I can have Brooks there. Can I have Brooks there with the bio blitz? Helping out look some frogs and lizards. So we can find. Awesome. What have you guys found so far? So far, we found like a small little anole in the bar tree over there. Nothing really special going on. Mostly because the weather is very, very dry. Very yeah. hot. Versus, you know, they like a humid, warm, like cooler temperatures, but mm -hmm. very hot every day, so it's not really seeing much. What's the what's the best time to usually do a lizard survey then? Well, this would make me like around dawn or like dusk, you know, when it's oh. fairly cooler around uh, here, not too hot, so like nice temperature right there. Okay. Correct. Is there is there anything you guys were hoping to find today that you that you didn't find on your survey? Mm, I was really hoping to see an iguana because they really do like to sunbathe sometimes, mm -hmm. but I guess it's way too hot for them, so now they're running probably like under a rock or a barn like they usually do. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are some other like reptiles and amphibians that you can usually find on St. Croix? Or I guess just lizards. What are some other lizards you can usually find around St. Croix? Well, <laughs> 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 I'm more like a frog oriented. Oh, you know, oh, oh, well, the frogs. Your frog. favorite species. Tell us about it. There is a endemic frog, the muted tree frog that we have here in St. Croix, only found here. It's very rare, you know, can't really find it much like you usually do. But frogs are usually around during the rainy season, again, very dry. And you can see the invasive Cuban tree frog, extremely invasive, as well as the, the toad, big old the cane toad, oh, okay. cane toad, very invasive cane toad. And of course, my favorite, which is the ditch frog, the, the white lip tree frog, very, very rare. But the thing about frogs, you can't really see, correct. <laughs> you can't really see them, but you can most definitely hear them more than you can see them. Oh, yeah. so it's like, so you have to learn like their sounds in most order to find them? Most definitely. I, had, I did some work over the summer in 2018 with Dr. Renata Feinberg, where I had to most definitely drill through and learn, listen learn. to recordings of many different species of frogs that I heard very enlightening experience so now it's like i'm haunted by like when i'm in the house i'm chilling and you hear like the people like oh that's a and i can tell you right away that's what we call it so it's pretty exciting so was pretty that part of the frog camp correct oh. no it was part of my um little research i did for ecs where i looked at the anthropogenic sounds of traffic and how they affect the red-eyed cuban tree and the red-eyed koki frog oh. and what oh, we found yeah. was actually that they actually when traffic drives by they see a dip in the communication of the frog Wow. And that's kind of alarming because those populations, we know that frogs use acoustics to communicate and breathe and so on and so forth. And seeing that little blip of data, like, wow, us just driving by heavily populated areas can definitely affect your rate of breathing and so on and so forth. So, again, that was pretty enlightening. Nice. So, is your past research? Well, oh, yeah, that was past research. Okay. And right. that was at UVI? Or Correct. Or? It's okay. St. Thomas, UVI, St. Thomas. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, a couple more questions. Um, how do you look for uh, for or reptiles and amphibians. <laughs> well, usually for the nodes, they have like a hierarchy for the trees, so you can mostly find some on the base of the trunk or on the trunk itself or in a canopy. So that's definitely if you're looking for the nodes. But when it comes to frogs, if you find a water source or something that could be relatively moist, they love the damp because, you know, they have subcutaneous or cutaneous respiration. They breathe through the skin and being moist helps the oxygen get in there and help them breathe very well. So a water source is a very good way to find frogs. Correct this cane toad, very, very invasive, highly aggressive cane toad. Voracious, eats anything if it's in his mouth, basically. And the presence of that definitely 
pheasants are a local species because oh. you know they eat most of the food source along with the Cuban tree frog. Don't let your dogs get it. Oh yes, very very poisonous to the dog. Very poisonous. Yeah. Very poisonous. Um, I'm just curious, what's the difference between a reptile and an amphibian? Well, reptiles are very primal esque. You know, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're both rely on um, outside temperatures, but amphibians they. What they spend most of their life both on land and in the water ah. versus reptiles are just strictly mostly on land or in the water they don't do both ah. so the young of frogs tadpoles they do the gestation period in the water through the mm -hmm. eggs and so on and so forth and then continue as adult what it could do both land and water cool. reptiles also have scales ah. and amphibians don't um not not in the same way so reptiles i guess we're going to talk about reptiles are lizards and turtles and snakes and uh, something called an amphibian. Um, amphibians are like frogs and toads and salamanders, which we don't have. Them. So um, yeah, the, exactly um, the, that two stage of life: frog, salamander, yeah. for amphibians, and then reptile scales are the big thing. There's some other like smaller other dis uh, differences, but those are the easiest ways. To okay. Do you guys have any fun facts about lizards or reptiles or anything you can think off the top of your head to share with our audience today? Well, my favorite thing to share is like my top two favorite reptiles are the largest reptiles, which is what we have here nesting, the leatherback turtle. That's the second largest reptile in the world, and the first happens to be the saltwater crocodile. So ah. like, oh man, saltwater crocodiles, they could go in the water, they could go in the ocean, like, yeah. And they happen to be the largest living reptile we know today. So And they're bigger than a leatherback? Correct. They I do not grow. want to find one of those ever. <laughs> Maybe from a distance. That's something I don't want to find. I have another question. Yeah. question. Why do their nose look like they're doing push-ups push -up. all the time? Oh, that's definitely a mating thing. Push -up <laughs> that's a mating thing? That's a mating thing. The male are they, are they just like yeah. always mating? <laughs> <laughs> no. it's territorial, very territorial creatures. Well, the male, you see the males with the dewlap. They come out with bright dewlap. colors and they do the push-ups. They both like different trees, different parts of trees, competing against each other. So it's very much a mating ritual going on. Making it push-up yeah. right. contest. Push-up dance. Right. So this is what I have. Right. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like, hey. Get it swollen. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that just about wraps up any everything we have to ask you guys. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, I don't think so. I think we, uh, it's been really fun. Uh, I've learned a lot today from the experts and um, it's been just fun looking around Frederickstead and looking for the nature. I think I said this earlier, but um, a lot of times we come to Frederickstead just to kind of, you know, go have dinner or walk along the waterfront and it's just fun to like look for the birds